So I regard uh, doing a final fusion after growth-friendly treatment kind of like uh, going to the dentist and having uh, some cavities drilled without anesthesia. It's something I uh, really don't look forward to, so I thought I'd bail on this one and show you, sorry, show you a case. Uh, this is a eight-month-old. Uh, this is before I saw her, um, the original x-ray showing the congenital anomalies. She's otherwise totally healthy except for a tether. And when I see her at age four, she's had her tether released. Um, she's got this progression of the curve. Her thoracic length is short as expected. Her lung volumes, however, are very good by CT. And she's been to San Antonio and been told to have a vector. This is her clinical appearance at this time, and now the curve has actually progressed a little more. And because of this trunk shift and because of my uh, <clears throat> belief that apical control is a good way to do these, I uh, was considering this. So does my, my uh, sort of philosophy is don't let the scoliosis progression produce a chest wall deformity. And so uh, I put up these uh, choices uh, as far as the treatment. But for me, with a normal chest wall, this rules out uh, rib-based devices. Um, we're looking at the concordance and the discordance between the front and the back, but there were basically two apical areas with hemivertebras attached. And so I did this convex eggshell, uh, homage to Charlie Heinig, who passed away recently. Um, without exposing the concavity, you can actually eggshell out both of the levels where the hemivertebra were and squeeze it down, as you can see here, uh, so that the convex side has been shortened and controlled. And then uh, put the growing system in top and bottom, tunneling it subcutaneously, submuscularly. And we didn't distract much at this point because we had some neuro changes. But the plan here is that at six months when you would normally do your distraction, we would then uh, take out the uh, caps on the apical screws so we can then in situ contour the rod and gradually push the convexity over to the concavity and equalize the two hemithoraces. So this is what she looks like initially with her trunk shift fixed. She gets lengthened once, twice. This is lengthening number four. And you can see how the contouring of the rods has changed with the in situ bending. Her, uh, her T1 to T12 is now uh, up to the 50th percentile. Her lung volumes are still doing pretty well. She's Anchors are out now at the top in December of 09. So this is her first unplanned, or first revision, which was planned to come along with her uh, distraction. Uh, we revised her. And then here's her uh, picture interoperatively six months after the revision and comparing it to six months before, you can see that we can't distract her anymore. So, at this point, your options are, of course, to wait and try it again, to observe, or to go ahead and fuse her. And I elected to just observe at this point. So here she is uh, at the age of 10. Uh, this, is, this is her in San Angelo with her uh, FFA uh, contest. Um, she's had six lengthenings and one revision, which was scheduled, and she can't be lengthened anymore. And here she is at 12. So this is two years, two and a half years later. She, I guess we can call her a graduate now. And everything is going pretty well. Her triradius now closes. Her thoracic length is quite good. We've never chest her, touched her chest wall. And here she is at 14. Here she is at 16. Wrists are five. So she's never had a final fusion. And that's where we started from. So 
it's possible that that apical exposure and the control at the apex may have helped making a final fusion uh, unnecessary. Um, it's also, I think it just sort of points out that there are a lot of patients who have had successful lengthening who don't actually need the final fusion, as this paper uh, of, uh, a couple years ago, it confirms that. Interestingly, congenital curves are just as likely not to need a final fusion as the other etiologies. And actually, to me, that was um, a, a little bit, I would have expected that con congenital curves actually don't need the final fusion as often as perhaps some of the other etiologies. But with the number of lengthenings and the age, uh, at the start of surgical treatment also has no difference in whether or not they need a final fusion, although intuitively it seems that the later you wait to start, then the more likely it is that you're not going to have to fuse them at the end because they will have reached close to maturity. And so I think when you have no further lengthening and an intact construct, as we had here at the age of 10, that observation is appropriate and you may be surprised at what happens. You don't have to do that final fusion. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions to Charlie? Yeah. Well, she lengthened very well, and so I'm not sure what else we could have done. Uh, I'd be glad to hear anybody who has a way of expanding PV, uh, pulmonary function in the face of good-looking chest and adequate elongation. Uh, I, I don't know what else I could have done. Michelle? Um, I haven't to this point. This is, you know, this is a uh, rod-based system to the spine, and so this is. I think this is the kind of case that uh, we tend to leave the implants if they are asymptomatic, and obviously the amount of rare earth ions in the blood or in the tissue is something to be. You know, we're all worried about it, but I don't think we really know. Yeah. Please. Well, I guess I'd throw it back to you. Is what do you do when you have a broken rod and you've done a final fusion? Uh, if the patient's symptomatic or if you follow it for a while and you see a change in the curve, then yes, that certainly is an indication to, to revise it and to, and to redo it. But we all have broken rods that are asymptomatic that we find on a follow-up x-ray, you know, and it's... Yeah, and the basic question, Charlie, is whether or not it's as beautiful as it looks. You call it that you avoided final fusion, but perhaps she has fusion because she had autofusion along the well, rod. I think that's, that's the another point. possibility for I the great correction. I think that's the point that the, that the ankylosis is essentially a final fusion. Exactly. Okay, the next speaker will be Ilka Hilenius from Finland. Yeah, okay. I can get you set here. I can get it. Just this one. 